Hi, I'm Scott Sheldon. I work with Go Metals, and uh, we are a critical metals company working primarily in Canada. Scott, good to see you. Good to see you indeed. Um, look, it's it's a kind of neat story to um, everyone here. So, why don't we just maybe start from the beginning and um, tell us a little bit about yourself and you know you know how's that relevant to what you're trying to do today? Um, so, we've been around since about 2010. Uh, we started as a gold explorer in the Yukon, and uh, the Yukon was a pretty welcoming environment, a uh, good place to start out. Uh, we ended up vending our first project to the Discovery Group in 2017, and at that point we kind of felt there was a need to move into critical metals, and uh, so we ended up staking the Monster IOCG project, and uh, that's got big uh, copper and cobalt potential. Right. Uh, then, okay. And then we kind of moved into some nickel in Quebec as well. But T- tell me, tell me, so a little bit. About, so, what, what's the what's the business model for the company? Are, are you explorers? Are you are you in prospect generators? Or what, what are you trying to be? Yeah, generally explorers. Uh, we'll find projects that we like, um, usually through staking, as that's kind of the easiest way to acquire projects, and uh, it's a good way for us to add value um, to a, pr- a project that we haven't spent a lot of money on to to pick up. Right. Okay. And what was it? What's the main bit more about the project you vended out to Discovery Group? Well, what, what did uh, you it was do called, there? It's, it's still called the Wells Project. Um, it was uh, yeah, uh, pretty new. It was staked after some interesting results from the YGS uh, survey, and um, we worked it up through 2012, 2013, 2014. Uh, did a drill program, uh, all through a, an incredibly tough gold market. Um, and yeah, so K2 Gold took it on, and um, and they've they've still got it. They've got plans to go back uh, this year, I believe. But. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. G- giving you an exploration company. Your so your your background is sort of mostly mostly on the business side. Who's who's working on the geology side? Yeah, we're a pretty small company. There's just myself and Harley Slade. Um, uh, we just share this office here. We we split um, the eleventh floor here on Melville Street with. Uh, a group of other kind of junior explorers so it's um it's a way to share on costs and it's a good way to share um information and kind of band together as uh as a group so it can be a lonely pursuit sometimes uh this exploration game so it's good to have uh, people and cover your back yeah okay and and so we obviously the project in question is um an iocg so tell us about what you know about the project and what, what, what we need to know. Okay, so it's uh, it, it's in a unique uh, area of the Yukon, um, just north of Dawson City. Um, it's in an area called the Wernicke Breccia, and it's it was part of the original kind of thesis when they developed the IOCG uh, model. Um, and I know you're familiar with IOCGs as well um, through Chile, but uh, the ones, kind of the analogs for our area are, are more in Australia, um, kind of around the, the Gawler Craton. Yeah, I, IOCGs have the potential to be very, very big. Um, so we like that kind of tier one potential. Um, uh, some of the challenges are it's it's very remote. Um, and yeah, and weather obviously can be uh, inclement. In, <laughs> it's, a, it's pretty rocky terrain, um, even for the Yukon. It's a... Uh, it looks more like uh, northern BC, right? And, and you know, can you tell us about grade or historic information? Or, or, or is, that, is this greenfield? What are we, what are we looking at? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's definitely greenfields. Um, it was drilled once before we'd staked it, and um, it was a total failed one one hole program. Uh, I guess they just kind of give, given up on it. Um, I think copper the copper price had fallen out at that point, so they they abandoned it. Um, we ended up picking it up, as I said, in 2018, and um, we kind of started more with uh, the geophysics. Uh, we ran some, uh, we did some gravity, the mag, uh, did a little IP. Um, we found gravity to be the most interesting, um, and obviously we did uh, a lot of soil soil sampling and that's uh, kind of geochemistry. Um, but yeah, no, the, gra- the grades are fantastic. It's um, even for cobalt, we see nice uh, pink uh, erythrite bl- uh, blooms. Um, so it's uh, it's yeah, no, it's, it's pretty pretty neat area too. But right, okay, okay. So you, you can, in terms of like you, you sort of likening it to, and it's quite nice to be able to liken it to Olympic Dam because that's 
<laughs> one of the world's largest yeah, uh, world's world's largest. Largest. Co comparing to <laughs> copper, copper producers. But um, in terms of your confidence around the kind of depth and continuity of, of, of mineralization at Arena Bloom and, and Base, where, where does that come from? In terms of which, sorry? The it, it, you know, with the, the confidence about the kind of depth and continuity of the mineralization for, you know, where, where does that come from? Yeah, well, if you look at the gravity, you've got these giant kind of gravity anomalies under underground. Um, we had, we tried to test them with an RC drill back in 20, uh, 2020, I believe. Um, definitely shouldn't have run an RC drill um, because we lost the, the booster pretty much right away. So we weren't able to weren't able to get down and actually test the, the gravity anomalies, unfortunately. We did see some right near the end of the hole. We were literally about five meters away from where we anticipated kind of a contact, but um, we did see a slight increase in mineralization at that point, but it wasn't enough to generate enough interest at that point. That right. But, but, but tell me about this, because you, you, you're finishing off a turn off thousand meter drill program, so you know, can, can you give me a sense of what, what that drill program looks like and what the kind of modeling looks like? With the, the which, sorry? The, 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 I thought you, you, are you completing a drill program on this at the moment? No, we did, did one in, in 2020. But oh, right, but there's the, no more drilling going on at the moment. Um, oh, okay. No, no, we're, we're plan we would love to do a drill program. We're just, we're not financed for it at this point. Right, okay, what are you going to do about that? The confidence comes from a lot of the work that we've done over the past few years on the project. Um, basically, we, we want to take a kind of a geophysics heavy approach. Um, when looking at these IOCGs, uh, the gravity is very important. Um, one of the biggest choices we had when doing the gravity was whether it would be airborne or ground. Um, so we ended up choosing ground um, just because of the, the elevation changes and you have these really rocky peaks. Um, so it makes uh, flying with a helicopter over uh, trying to do gravity very, very challenging. Um, the walking is also challenging, but um, uh, we were able to get some pretty good results using using that gravity. Right, and it, 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 it kind of sounds like um, like this pretty pretty ex expensive um, process to kind of deal with this kind of geophysical or, or even the kind of geochemistry chemistry with with that kind of t topography. So you, you, how, how sustainable is that? How does one go about? Building out a, a a a plan and costing that. Yeah, well, it, it's definitely expensive to get up there. Um, the neat part is that we can basically use uh, a lot of resources out of Dawson. Um, that's obviously a historical mining town. Um, there's some great outfits there, and uh, we've developed some pretty good relationships over the years. Um, we've worked with a few different drillers. Um, we've got a. Another company that has some projects in 60 Mile, which is um, just on the Alaska-Yukon border uh, off to the west. Um, and yeah, so it is it's uh, it is challenging for developing kind of uh, these drill programs, um, but we, we felt we did everything right last time. Uh, we just had unfortunate, uh, we lost our booster, which was, uh, it kind of put us <laughs> in, in a bad position. Um, Tell me, tell me about mine compare. You, you, you've got this is sort of an AI partnership that you've got with them. You just, is that still working? You're still working with them? We are. We're on a three month pilot. Um, it was uh, they they approached us and we had an initial conversation. Um, we talked about how we'd already been using some AI. Um, I guess about a year and a half ago, Harley started playing around with some of the AI. And uh, he developed a way to help us enhance some of our, our map sets. Um, and so that was kind of our intro to AI. Um, and then we started playing around with the language models, just kind of the off the shelf ones like ChatGPT. And uh, we found that that could kind of give us some new ideas for some of the projects we were looking at. And it could even help us interpret some of the projects that, that were coming across our way. Um, so. Yeah, interpreting new projects and also using analogs to kind of give us some new ideas on what we're doing. Interesting. And is it quite good at refining targets with kind of these large Bratcher hosted systems? I mean, what was it good at? I guess is what I'm asking. The, well, the mine compare one is is pretty neat because they're actually training it off of geological data specifically. So, so we found that um, when we're looking at kind of the off the shelf uh, LLMs, they are um, they're very friendly and they kind of um, they don't really challenge you very much. 
Um, so they kind of they placate you a bit, um, but it seems like the ones that uh, the models that uh, mind compare has been using or developing are um, are pretty challenging. So they've uh, you can uh, almost have a debate back and forth. So um, we we found that using the AI as a you look at it more as a team member, um, so some something that you can ask questions to and and even debate. Um, it, it becomes pretty valuable. Yeah, it's it's, it's actually. It's actually getting quite good, isn't it? Um, it, it does it sort of help you kind of with, with modeling as well in terms of like, you know, if you wanted to do like copper cobalt equivalency and or around any of your assumptions, what, what, what have you been throwing into it, for example? Um, yeah, good question. Um, uh, a lot of it has been trying to find similar analogs. Um, so kind of analyzing like um, the projects in Gala Craton, like Promenade Hill, uh, Caravatina, obviously Olympic Dam. Uh, Olympic Dam actually isn't the best comparable just because of they have so much uranium, um, but it's it's kind of similar. And uh, yeah, Ernest Henry, which isn't quite in the Gallup Craton, but it's it's also fairly similar. But because we're such a we're a small group, it's easy to it makes it easier if we can kind of process all this information through a, a language model, and it kind of gives us something that's uh, more more digestible. Okay, and like cause when you, you talked, did you say there's like one diamond? Drill hole and five RCs. Is that, is that what? Yeah, you that's get correct. To? Yeah. Right. Okay. So I mean, it's it's not a huge data set, but it, it was when it's taking the sort of historical geological data as well. Do, does it start to give you some clues as to how you're going to go about potential drill program? And you know, is that going to be enough to kind of intrigue you know investors in, into this? Yeah, no, it actually gave Harley recently a, a new idea on kind of where we should be targeting uh, the diamond drill now. Um, it, it is tough though because we have three large targets so you have to kind of choose um, which ones you start at but it's I guess it's a good problem to have but um, uh, yeah but different different benefits to each each one but um, ideally we'll be able to test uh, test them all right okay um, so obviously you've got to kind of get all, get all this together and then kind of you know, get get out to market and, and raise raise some capital. Do you think it's a good time to be raising money for projects like this? It feels like it. We're we're tracking a lot of the kind of new financings coming <laughs> coming down the pipe, and it's it's looking very positive. Um, we're a smaller company, so we're traditionally kind of at the end, <laughs> um, or not not the first to the fountain. But um, uh, but yeah, no, it's it's looking good. Um, the good catalyst is just even the copper price. Um, if you have an IRCG, um, that's obviously a huge copper potential, um, and it's great to see copper just flying right now. So yeah, and what what about what? A, how do you kind of read the market at the moment? Obviously, retail have had a torrid time the last three four years. Um, copper's making comeback. Copper price seems to be moving the right way. Um, but we've seen a lot of companies look at alternative financing from from industry or even from outside the sector um, for the more kind of more popular metals, gold certainly doing that, silver's doing that, and, even, and then copper even recently as well. So do, do you think with a company your size is inevitably going to come from retail or do you think there will be strategics who, you know, will take a punt at something like this? Yeah, it's always good to have a strategic backing. Um, yeah, our, our last financing um, was done uh, with the help of Haywood, um, I think we raised at about a dollar twenty, but we were using the um, the charity flow through, um, so that was that was pretty helpful. Uh, and then they had some strategic guys that, that that they brought on as well, groups like Crestcat and and all that. Um, so those are good groups to definitely reach out to. Uh, the other option is um, kind of getting a big company backing. Um, BHP would obviously be amazing because they have so much experience in. Uh, IOCGs, but um, uh, yeah, we we went through the uh, BHP Explore program, which was kind of a, a, a fun exercise. It was on another project, um, a nickel sulfide that we had out in Quebec, um, but that was a great way to kind of see how the big up the big guys operate. Okay, and um, can I ask about the rest of the kind of portfolio in terms of you know, what value it has to you and you know how that could help? Because obviously, I think you talk about you know, natural hydrogen for a deep hydrogen corp. Um, how relevant is that to your balance sheet at the moment or your ability to access capital? Yeah, it was it was kind of something that was on our radar. Um, 
and it was we were coming into the kind of the winter months and we we could see a bit of a downtime so we kind of did a little dive into what was happening with that uh, we made a interesting connection with uh, Stéphane Sejourné, who was a, a gentleman out of Quebec who had some interesting theories um, on how hydrogen could um, could show up in the shield. Um, so we kind of uh, poked into that a little bit. Um, part of the catalyst that we would be waiting for there would be um, some of the work from Coloma or Hyterra, um, even Quebec Innovative. Um, those are some of the groups that were kind of waiting to see if they can prove flow rates. Um, so we're, um, we're kind of on a holding pattern. We're, n we're not going to put a lot of resources into it at this point, but, um, but it's kind of there if, if it does blow up. So, right. okay. So, I mean, so, I mean, just kind of p pitch it for me here. So what, what am, what am I buying into? You're an exploration company. Okay. Get it. But wh why, why should we put our money into you? There's a bunch of copper stories out there and there's a whole bunch of quite exciting gold stories out there. What, what, what do you, what do you bring to the table and you know, why are you going to make me money? So why should you invest with us? Well, we're a small team, but we're extremely aggressive. Uh, we love putting all the work into the ground. Uh, we love the science behind uh, um, the work that we're doing. Um, and we're very motivated. Um, you look at the markets right now, um, we're, we're getting pretty pumped. Um, copper is flying. Um, uh, you're seeing a lot of financings right now. It's, it's a pretty exciting time to be in, in the mining industry. Um, we're a Canadian company and we work in Canada. That's, that's, uh, the, there's so much, uh, potential in Canada. Um, and it's a jurisdiction that we know, um, uh, we've been here since 2010 and, uh, we've had successful projects. Um, if you look at the IOCGs that we're doing, that's big potential. Um, and what are the, what are the majors or the mid tiers want? Uh, they want a project with big potential. So, uh, we'll try and work do what we can to get up, get it up to that point where um, it, it looks attractive to to someone else, um, and then uh, and then we can keep doing what we're doing. Do you want to go? For, you want to try that again? Um, Why are you going to make me money? Because <laughs> don't forget, you got the you got the Quebec thing as well. Okay. You you got good team. It's copper. It's potentially very big. Right. Right part of the world, you know, for, for mining, all that kind of good stuff. Well, we are a exploration first company, a uh, small company, but uh, we have a very low overhead. Uh, we'd like to focus pretty much everything we have on exploration. Um, we're not a big uh, promotional kind of group, but um, but we, we find that if we do good work, then that will take care of itself. Um, we've had some pretty interesting projects in the past. Um, we generate a lot of interest for our HSP project uh, that basically blew up in 2023. Uh, created a massive staking rush all through all through the area, and uh, I believe about a, a million kilometers were staked uh, kind of around us. So, so that was pretty interesting. Um, we still have a very interesting project that was generated from all that excitement, uh, the KM98 project. Um, that's a huge uh, BTM project, uh, the vanadium titanomagnetite. Um, it wasn't even what we were really looking for because we were looking for nickel sulfide, but um, but it's a nice a nice bonus to have. So the the, the monster project is uh, kind of our way of showing that we have uh, tier one potential, and um, being a small market cap, we have uh, there's a lot of room to grow, I guess. But 